group. All three of us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, all oh. eight. <laughs> all eight now. And we're on our way back. Did you figure out which one is that? Uh, no. Uh, Keeman's grabbing his books right now so we okay. can key them out. Okay. So we've got the Rusula group. This mm -hmm. is like Lactarius deliciosus, which aren't as delicious as they say. <laughs> <laughs> So, these are actually some edible rustlers here, though. Some, looks like Cyanoxantho or Xerampolina group. They're really pretty hard to distinguish between. But then... That is shrimp. Yeah, Rusulus. shrimp. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then these ones, pass around, these ones smell delicious, but they are, hence the name, Rusula fragrantissima, mm -hmm. but they are toxic. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It smells great. You don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> some Crogomphus. Looks like Subroseus. Very similar to Organ Organensis, but Organensis has black staining. And they both grow here, so it's really hard to differentiate unless you happen to know. And yeah, the Organensis will have like black spots. All that from the staining. That's a crow gompus, you said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, to the chanfrels and small chanfrels. So oh, these yeah, are... We cover that. Is ball we chanfrel a really good name? A lot name? of beginners first time. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> so good enough. <laughs> oh, but there's a lot of ball chanfrels. Well, this is the ball chanfrel. That's the ball chanfrel. Why is that the ball chanfrel? No, we have cantharellus. Uh, Formosus, right? Yeah. Yeah. Formosus. They're all Formosus. Good we didn't find anything else today. Except for that one Sabalbidus. So, I'll pass these ones so down. There is one there. other species is right there. Yep. Yeah. Cantharellus Sabalbidus. Right here. Uh, the rosy <laughs> chanterelle was here. There it is. Yeah. yeah you can call it white chanterelle. Yeah. Sabalbidus. White and chanterelle. Then that central? <laughs> these are scaly chanterelle. Okay. But Which they're are, not even a chanterelle, and they're no. not even in Cantharellaceae. No. They're not even in the chanterelle family. Oh, so geez. these are Turbinellus they make flacosus. Me sick. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, not they are for some people. Well, yeah. so when I eat around, them, it's like they're so not well, it's it's edible. Compare the gills. I would consider them non-toxic <laughs> to most. People About call, a day, it feels like my gut is tired call, it Say that chanterelles have false gills. <laughs> they're like that, like <laughs> human was saying, false is yeah. kind of okay. misleading because they're still gills. They just look different, and so that's it's better to just look at how they differentiate, <laughs> what makes them different. Mm -hmm. And then I guess. So is it that the gills kind of continue down the stem? Or or uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> the specific forking. Whereas the Orontiaca, the small chanterelle, it has very uniform forking. It'll split at one spot and go evenly down both sides. This is this is red. The chanterelle, it's very non-uniform. It's just sporadic. It'll just go off this way, split, mix with another one. Keep they're going. not true gills. They're they're actually wrinkles. And so if you start looking at them, they're wrinkles. Yeah. Instead of gills. Okay. And that's a really good way to separate them out. Um, oh my god, this one's so good. Uh, who here Thanks. found a mushroom that's on the table if they want to identify? But they don't know what it is. It's that orange one in the corner. That, yeah. Hypholomus? Yeah, Gomphidius or some sort. Gomphidius Cocratia? Yeah. Um, Another one? Hypholomus? Is that a Hypholomus? Yeah, it's Hypholomus. Like I said, it's the champs. Yeah. 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 Okay, so who found a porcini today? Did everybody find a porcini today? Okay. All right. Where did you guys find porcini? On the ground. Under the pines. On the ground, right? On the ground. This time of year, it's really hard to go wrong, right? The only way you can go wrong is if you like went way up out of the porcini habitat where there's no pines anymore, or you went somewhere, you know, in the grasslands and park, somewhere where there's no pines or no live oak. This mushroom actually grows in Santa Rosa underneath live oak. Okay. It grows around yeah. the area underneath live oak. It, it also associates mycorrhizally. You know, it grows with the roots of you know, Pinus maricitum and Pinus um, uh, the shore pine. Fish fish pine. pine. So it grows with the roots of those, but it also will jump ship and go from conifers into hardwood. Basically, it'll jump ship and it'll 
start to associate with uh, uh, Quercus agrifolia, which is the live oak. Uh, most people don't know to look for that, but if you guys have a, an open space near you that has live oak, go and look. There might be some porcini there right now or after the next rain. Um, they, they actually, they grow where they like to grow, but they only grow with the roots of trees. So if there's no trees nearby, uh, there's no, no vine or live oak, you're not going to find them. Um, and the only oak tree that I know of that they grow with is the live oak, right? They get really, really big. We call this what? Grand edulis. Grand edulis, which means big edulis. Um, <laughs> it's the biggest <laughs> in the world, right? So is this the same mushroom as this? No. 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 But it looks pretty similar, so you could walk right by that. If you think you're walking by a field of these, maybe you're walking by a field of these, you're just kind of missing them, right? How beautiful right you got to pick them. Is picking mushrooms bad? Are we killing the mushroom? Are we ripping it out by the roots? Should no. we be cutting it? No. No. Okay, good. Those are all good answers. <laughs> um, the no. mycelium, the, the, the organism that produces these, these are basically the reproductive organ. We're identifying the organism by looking at its private parts, right? Okay? It's a fruit. So it's a fruit, right? So we can't actually see the organism that's living inside the dead wood, that's living inside the ground, that's living with the roots of... The, the trees that is it's alive and it's there and it's doing its thing but it's not mushroom sexy time so guess what we don't get mushrooms but it's still there okay and then all of a sudden when the environmental conditions are correct and it's mushroom sexy time it produces sporocarps the whole reason the mushrooms exist is to produce spores which produce more mushrooms as they get you know, dispersed throughout the environment right we've got two different types of mushrooms we have Mycorrhizal. What does mycorrhizal mean? Growing on the rhizomes. Okay, it grows with the roots. And then we have saprophytic, right? Or saprotrophic, pardon me. Saprophytic is a plant. Saprotrophic would be mushroom, anything that's breaking down dead material. Saprophytic implies that it's a plant that lives off of other plants, right? So that's a misnomer and it's often applied, right? What's a saprophytic or saprotrophic mushroom? What's a saprotrophic mushroom? Silver tough. Yeah, silver tough. So what, what's the purpose of saprotrophic mushrooms? They decompose. They break down dead material. So when you're looking for mushrooms, you're either looking for the right trees that host their mycelial friends, the, you know, porcinis or other chanterelles or other mushrooms that are edible, or you're looking for dead stuff. <coughs> if you find dead trees, you're going to find mushrooms. Every single dead tree you ever encounter is going to have some kind of fungal activity on it, right? Some of them are edible, some of them are not. There is no rule whether or not it gro if it grows on dead wood, it's edible. No, that's not a rule. There are some that are deadly poisonous. If it grows mycorrhizally, they're edible. No, that's not a rule because some of them can be very poisonous and kill you, right? Are these the soy mushroom? I mean, they look really different, right? They look kind of the same. What is this? Bolides. Bolides. Yeah, this is Ruba bolides polcaramus, right? Um, we also have Smilellus right here. These guys all have pores, right? Mm -hmm. You can't see these because it's really tight. These never open up. Um, these guys do, and they, they all stain, right? And so a lot of people say if it stains blue, you can't eat it, or if it stains blue, it's hallucinogenic. There are no rules like that, okay? You have to know the species. How many species of mushroom are there in California? A lot. A lot? What's what's a good what's a good number for a lot? Uh, we don't know, but there's 3,800 plus described species right now, and we're probably gonna reach 10,000. That's the estimate, maybe more in California. How many species of mushroom are there in the world? Mushroom, not just fungi, but mushroom. We don't know, but we estimate one and a half to five million. Wow. That's the current number. That's a lot of mushrooms. I can't learn them all. I mean, I'd like to, but <laughs> holy cow. Um, we look at stuff and we, we start to categorize them by similarities, right? Do they have pores? Do they have gills? You know, we don't have any teeth mushrooms here. Uh, maybe hydnellum down there? Maybe. <coughs> Is there any hydnellum? No, we have some elongated pores, so that's bad. Okay. So usually mushrooms have either pores, gills, or they have teeth. Or they have a small carp like this, Verasis, which is kind of all convoluted. Or they have a polypore-like surface, which is um, you know, kind of like this, but it can be very smooth, like polypore. 
My point is, there's only so many forms that nature can take to distribute pores or distribute spores. So individually, over time, these forms have developed through evolution to distribute spores. The whole reason of these mushrooms existing is to produce more mushrooms, to reproduce, to have these mushrooms glob on to an animal that's walking through an area, you know, maybe down a path. You guys notice that mushrooms are on a path more often than other areas? Yeah. Why is that? Yeah. Why would a mushroom want a fruit next to the path versus underneath some brush? It wants to be found. It wants to be picked. These are all good answers. The answer is, we think that mushrooms are smart enough, that evolution is smart enough to produce sporocarbs in areas that they might actually have a, a chance of being picked up by the wind or by animals and distributed throughout the environment so that they can propagate their species, right? This is a theory. We can't prove it. We could, but I mean, I, it's just a good theory. Um, but it, it seems like the most likely. There's no other reason for it, right? Um, this mushroom right here, which is actually one of my favorite mushrooms, I find this all over the place. It's Chalciparus piperatus, and it's a very spicy bully. This tastes like pepper, like peppercorn, right? Wow. You can only eat a little bit of it. If you eat a bunch, you're gonna get really sick, and I don't know how you could choke it down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful mushroom. Is this so one? this is Russell Abrevipes, and when they say Russell Abrevipes, it should have a short foot. Brevipes means short foot in Latin, but it's got a longer that's stem. A so it's really kind of a misnomer, but we still go with it. But that's, that's, no, that's, that's what it was. So that's a Suillus. You said Russula. Oh, sorry. Suillus <laughs> brevipes. Suillus <laughs> brevipes. This is a Russula. I'm sorry. I'm talking too fast. So when we say short foot, you know, Suillus brevipes doesn't really have a short foot. It's a misnomer, but we go with it. Um, is this guy a chanterelle? No. No. Who found this today? Can you eat this? Some yes. people can. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I can eat it. It's not toxic. <laughs> <laughs> tried all these things, huh? <laughs> I've tried it. <laughs> Again, with convergent evolution, all. all of these have wrinkles, right? We've got Gomphus clavatus, we've got Turbinellus flocculosus, and we've got Cantharellus formosus. They're all three different genera. In fact, these guys are in Gomphaceae. This is in Claveraceae or uh, Cantharellaceae. They're in different families, but they look really similar. So you can't always go by looks. That's my point. You can't just go, they look similar, so they are similar. Um, these are delicious. If you're going to go out there and you're going to learn one or two mushrooms today, you know, learn this one, which you guys obviously did. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of stands out. This one. Mm -hmm. now, what is this? Mm -hmm. Who knows? And the scientific name? Belitis edulis. Grand edulis. Yes. Belitis edulis. So call it that because a couple of things go by Porcini in the world. Okay. Um, what is this? And the scientific name? Formosus. Right? Um, can we eat these? Yeah, what are these? What are, what are all these little guys yeah, down here? They were everywhere today, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're, 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 they look a little scary. Yeah, they're... <laughs> they look like scary. s'mores. They're, okay. <laughs> like, mush, like marshmallows. They're little white birds. mushrooms. These are all lepiotas, right? <laughs> and lepiotas can be highly toxic or they can be non-toxic. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you can ID them a lot of times using a book. But when you're out there, don't, you know, why would you pick little guys like this? I mean, hey, there's a lot of stuff out there, but how about these guys? They're big and beefy. Whoa. Yeah, Whoa. That's weird. Those are the ones I found. They look yeah. like they would make a great oh, edible, no. but... Well, what would happen if you ate these? I don't know. You'd probably get really sick, and well, you could, you probably you couldn't travel. eat a bunch. It tastes really bad. So, <laughs> Which as a good it? rule of thumb, you know, if it's you're tasting idiots. stuff idiots. with Russula, no, you can actually taste Russula. It's the only genus I, I know of, except for Lactarius. Yeah. You can do this with, or you can taste it. If it tastes spicy, don't eat it. Idiots, and if can. it tastes good, you can eat it. Try. That's only with Russula, and that's when you get good enough with mushrooms to know the genus Russula. Um, this. Let's see. Russula fragrantissima. Closely related to that, it's a Russula. That one will make you really sick. This one's actually dinner. 
Um, this is Gymnopolis, and some members of this genus are actually hallucinogenic or contain some other weird chemicals and stuff. Not a good mushroom to mess around with. It usually makes people sick. This is one of the ones where when we get poison center calls, um, people's dogs have eaten it a little bit. And it tastes really bitter. I don't, you know, humans don't usually eat it, but it's usually dogs. Um, it doesn't taste really good, but these are beautiful specimens of it. Yeah, we found them next to a parking lot. <laughs> what about the Amanitas? Who's afraid that they're going to pick Amanita phylloides and die? Just be honest. <laughs> everybody be honest. Okay, everybody here. Everybody what kind of Amanitas do we find here today? Pecicola. Well, the Lepidella is a little. Yeah, the, the little tiny okay, Lepidella. Let me show them to you. What's this guy? But which Amanita? Does anybody know which Amanita this is? Augusta? Yeah. It's Amanita Augusta. Uh, what does this taste like? Delicious. Death. Maybe shrimp. Death. <laughs> <laughs> Who has eaten this mushroom before? Nope. I have. <laughs> it's edible. What does it taste like? Yeah. It tastes like tin foil with salt. Uh, <laughs> it's not great, okay? But it's edible. How about this mushroom right here? This is another Amanita, and this is closely related. To this oh, Amanita, believe it or not, this is a really common mushroom you can find year-round in California. Ooh, it's like flipped. This is the same mushroom as this. Wow. So a lot of people go, how do I do mushrooms? Well, you have to know the stage from beginner uh, to advanced. Uh, and for beginner. For beginner. Very beginner. <laughs> for a beginner, don't eat this. And, and when you're IDing Amanitas, you want to dig up the whole mushroom. And whoever collected these did a really good job. Who collected these? Colleen and I. I yeah? Colleen. Colleen, okay, very good. You guys did an awesome job. Um, you collected the entire thing. So we want to start further out from the mushroom and kind of dig up the whole thing and be able to look at the base. You know why? This is actually a group of mushrooms and they can all be really closely, they're really closely related. They can all look really you know, similar, but once you actually start to look at the vulva and that's the cup that is at the base here, this material, you can look in books, and if, once you look at it enough times, you can be able to ID the mushrooms just from the vulva cup. <laughs> it takes a while, but you, you can do it. Um, we didn't find... What What didn't we find today that you guys wanted to find? Candy caps. Candy candy caps. caps. Why, why aren't candy caps here? It's not wet enough. It's not moist no enough. Rain. They could show up, but they didn't early. So when we talk One about rules with did. mushroom hunting, there's stuff that shows up at like weird times that... <laughs> um, hedgehog is too early. Um, January, February. So things fruit in sequence. And you can almost get used to stuff. If you come out here enough years in a row and pick mushrooms, you're going to get used to seeing stuff fruit in sequence. And you're like, okay, if I see this and this, then this is next. Okay? And there's a lot of really common stuff. Who found this leucocoprinus? Pretty. Where was this? That was in the wood chip uh, area. Same place where we Close to a house or? No, no, they had chipped the trees that had fallen down into the road and threw them in a big pile. Yeah. It's not Bermuda. Oh. No, it isn't? I think no. I That's the same one that we found last it's, it's, it's not Bermuda. It's totally different. Notice it's not the, totally different. Notice the coloring of the scales. Yeah. Really cool. Thing. This is an introduced mushroom. Uh -huh. It came from somewhere. It was introduced. It's not native. So do we have do we have mushrooms that are introduced that are you know species that come in that are taking over? We actually do. Amanita phylloides is from Europe. Okay, the most deadly mushroom that we typically see people eating, picking, and dying from is actually from Europe. It was brought over here with the roots of trees that were saplings that were planted in Berkeley and up in British Columbia back in the 1930s to the 50s. So these mushrooms are introduced, they're not actually native. Crazy, huh? But they had to have a host, so they actually came with their host tree over here. Um, not everything is native, so you have to be able to wade through that too, and stuff pops up in really weird spots. What's bad about those phylodes though is that they've jumped hosts. They, 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 they've jumped hosts many times. Now they have, now they have many local hosts that aren't really yeah. uh what's the word for it uh, evolved with them yeah. mm -hmm. so they're like you said taking over yeah. and becoming mm -hmm. a dominant mushroom in the areas where they have they're taken going a we actually don't know if they're pushing out the other mushrooms <laughs> that were mycorrhizal with those trees but Just it's possible yeah. you know nobody's done the research so when when you join soma we fund scholarships we fund grad students that are doing work on 
things like Amity the Floydies, Jumping Host, and we try to you know give money to people that are researching stuff so that I can sit here and McKelson can sit here and Clark can yeah. sit here and we've read the papers or we've done the research and we can you know pass on that information to you to help you know help keep you safe help the community learn more about their natural environment but that's what SOMA does is we really fund uh, research for grad students right what is this guy? So all the beginners are supporting Something the PhD there. students. <laughs> it's probably Rasalospora, but it's not Apiculata, or it's not Rasalospora. Rasalospora is in the mountains. Yeah, no, and it's this one is of not the subspecies. But this is, this is, um, would you eat this? Yeah. It's not Parasa. Yeah. Would you eat this? No, I wouldn't eat the yellow. Oh, these are the I same. I would look it up, yeah. make sure I knew what it was do, first. Do you eat many Rasala, or do you eat maybe Vermeria? Yeah. Yeah, like all of them? No, not the green yeah. ones. <laughs> not the green ones, very good. <laughs> not Apiculata. Not the ones that are gummy some inside. Make, yeah, some make you sick, some okay. don't. We, you know, we don't know enough about Romeria, so if you like Soma yeah. and you want to join, um, please do. <laughs> and there's there's many people out there researching yeah. Romeria right now, and we could give them a scholarship, and we could learn about you know what this is. I have my guess. Oh, oh. <laughs> Not that one now. I don't know. It's a different one. one. <laughs> now you see how brittle they are when you drill. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to show you how brittle they are when you drill. <laughs> this is Gymnopolis um, origenus. Yeah. So was this found on a rotting stump? Oh, well, maybe. It's another Gymnopolis. You can see the similarities, right? It's not the same species. Again, we're talking about something that's totally not edible. You would not want to eat this. Right? What about these ones? Um, these like really old. Okay. The color change. Yeah. Like reddish brown. Probably no, this guy. Oh, that's a that's a Yes. Oh, really? Those are related. Wow. Yep. They're the same thing. Oh, that's the same. It's all hypofasciculari. So things oh. definitely change when they get older, right? Oh. They they mature. They turn into different colors. What is this guy? What is that? Wow. This is one of my Not favorite mushrooms. This comes from a tree. That's crazy. Oh. Is this oysters? No, you you would get really sick. Dude. Oh! <laughs> oh my god, they're all dying. <laughs> so this is Capanella acrotomentosum. If you look, so that's what if you, if you all right. If you're wondering if you can eat it and it falls apart on you, no. <laughs> okay. Simple. So this is called the velvet foot pax, right? And when this is dry, you can actually, if you want to pass it around, it's really okay. oaky, but um, it's velvety, right? That's the foot. Velvet foot paxillus. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> what is this guy? This is one that everybody should know. If you're, yeah. This is the smell. The real Could you eat that? Yeah. Yes. All right. No. 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 Could everybody eat this? Everybody here eat this? Chances Maybe are not. there's at least one or two people here that would get really sick from this no matter what. So this, this one's is, mine. You think I should just take the Chances one? are there's you probably should, one If you're going to eat this mushroom, it try it out velvety. first. Don't oh, eat a plate full. Cook oh for at least half an hour. If you eat this mushroom raw oh, or you eat this mushroom undercooked, you will get sick. And 5% of the population will get really sick even if it's cooked well. Yeah. So like when you're allergies. allergies. <laughs> porcini, one of the safe ones. This is one where you can eat, everybody can eat this, right? I've never heard anybody that's, that's allergic to this. There are 5 or 10% of the population really allergic to this. You're not going to die, but you wish you'd die. Oh. <laughs> like instant cholera. Yeah, same with like Lechipurus conifercola right here, the chicken of the woods. This has been the, the, the most, this is the most omnipresent. <laughs> this is the most omnipresent mushroom we have right now in California because it fruits really before the rain. Anybody know what this is? Chicken of the woods. Make the chicken of the woods part pie. Conifercola, and look how much brighter it is than the Gilbertsonia, right? It's a different species, and there's 17 species throughout the world of Latiparus, right? And they grow on different trees, and they grow in different areas of the world. Um, they're called chicken in the woods, which the is a misnomer because they don't taste like chicken. But, but they have the texture of the chicken muscle tissue. 
is going to eat yeah. this and get sick. So if you had a dinner uh, party of 20 people, one person or two breast. people is going to get really sick. And yeah, the, rest the breast the muscle. It has the, yeah. it has the texture of... Like the fibrousness, the yeah. fibrous muscle tissues. <laughs> Cook your mushrooms thoroughly and only eat a small amount. That's what I'm trying to say. Is only eat a small amount before, you know, and wait like an hour or two. And then after an hour or two, if your stomach is okay after an hour, you can eat that. But don't eat a lot. I mean, um, if your stomach starts to bubble after five minutes, don't eat that mushroom. Just leave it alone, right? That's a good rule of thumb. Fair. No, it is. Which room area do we think this is? I would eat that. has got the uh, bread. You think that's Tano bread? Oh my gosh. Uh, just a little public service announcement. He's not done yet. Oh, yeah. Um, anyway, a little public service announcement about the trash cans here. We want people to pack out their trash because it overwhelms the dumpsters here on site. So we want everybody to just take it with you, leave no trace. That way, um, you know, we're not we're not overwhelming the resources of the team that takes care of the process. And if you want to grab your mushrooms right after the talk is over, you can grab what your mushrooms off the table. What is this? Poro de Dahlia? Chrysophilia, or something very similar. Um, if you look, it, if you look, it's kind of got maize gills, right? So the gills are kind of like a maze, right? Poro de Dahlia, Chrysophilia. Um, there is no common name for that one. Oh, I just ate this bird. This is so that's a poisonous, right? That is fatal. Whatever I do, I always, yeah. That's the same yeah, mushroom as this, but just yellow. Yeah, that was good. Poor Nadalia. And like that is better for dying. It is a young Better for dying. I've just seen that. Why not? I would go for it. Look at that. Yeah, no, definitely. It could be Dahlia. Could be the Dahlia. I forget the name of it. So that's what I got. A what can I do with these? Die. You can die with these, right? Not like Olympia. <laughs> <laughs> the most common mushroom in the woods today was lepiota. This is one you guys should know because it comes up uh, not edible. They look edible. They look delicious, right? Because they're nice. Uh, they can pick them up. They contain amatoxins. This is the same toxins that we find in Nucleoides, Bisporgia, and other deadly amatoxins. You'll be eligible to volunteer. They could kill you. They could not have too many volunteers. In fact, there's a at least 20 to 50 species in the park they all look really similar. I can tell you what I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody have any mushrooms that they want ID? Mm. Like in your basket that you want ID? Oh. Yeah. Have some, bring it over yeah. here and, and Mikhail and I will take a look at it. Okay, we just found one being eaten up by a slug. So when they grow in a family, you said, is it like really close by or maybe like 10? 